Today, friends, we are going to use Tinkercad to make a super slick snap fit connector for dog waste bags. So let's get cracking. Friends, of course, we are using Tinkercad, which can be found at Tinkercad.com. When you get there, this is your homepage. I'm going to bounce to the designs. This is the design I'm playing with. Notice I've got lots of trial and error. I don't want to lose all my trials and errors, so I'm going to click on the gear and I'm going to choose duplicate. That means I can have a ton of fun showing you how this was all built, and I will not lose the project I already created. Let me give you a quick history lesson. This is a fun project. If I do T for transparent, you can see it uses the printable thread. I've got this tutorial where it makes a wing nut, but I had a problem with the caps coming off eventually while we were walking the dog. That's why I came up with this idea. I'm going to hit T for transparent, where it's just a little ring that snaps in so that way while you're carrying it there's no way it can unscrew it could hook on something and pop off but we're going to make it tight enough that i don't think that will be an issue this snap fit also gave the bonus of making this a much thinner print and it's so much easier to build than the screw threads all right so let me walk you through this technique so that you can build any style you want so the first thing i did was i brought out a cylinder made the sides the max and then i measured the bag to find the numbers i wanted you can see here i set this to 39. to do that i would shift drag and then click the box and type the 39 so it snapped to that distance and then i chose to set that part's thickness to three millimeters just like that same part now i took the inside and i made it 33. so once again control d shift stretch 33 press enter that one i made taller of course selected the two l for a line chose this one to be the master and i chose center and then i always like to look at this from the corner and i'll right click rotate so you can see that middle a little better now i chose to give this a bevel i'm going to put two right here and I'm going to set the segments at 10 and press enter. The final cylinder was the peg that it sits on. I did some measuring here, found out 7 was good. So once again, control D. This time though, I'm going to make this one super tall. And I'm going to use alt, shift, and shrink. Notice it goes around the center. When I type the measurement of 7, it snaps to that exact spot. So that it actually stayed center. That is because we held alt, and shift as we built that part. So the magic mechanism that makes this work is called the torus. It is right here. Once again, we bring it out and we're gonna simply adjust its properties. Backing up to my measurements, that dog waste bag is about 33 millimeters. So we're gonna click on this and give it a radius of 16, which would be a diameter of 32. We are gonna choose 1.6 for the thickness of this. And we're going to maximize the sides. I can now shift select these two, choose L for a line. I'm going to click on this cylinder to make it the master. And we want center, center, and top. I'm going to click on that now and choose control down to move it two millimeters. With these parts built, I'm going to quickly select all four shapes and I'm going to lock them. That way they cannot move. Now the next part over here, I will ungroup it. You can see right here, we have got a tube. This is the shape right here. It asks for a radius. The number we're using is 19 and a half. Notice 19 and a half gets us the same 39 that we had over here. So it's just simple math. We have also brought in a torus. For this one, the radius is 16.2. Notice it's a little larger. And then the tube is 1.8. Once again, a little larger and maximized. I am also cutting in a one millimeter groove so we can pry this open later with a screwdriver. All right, so with this part assembled, I'm gonna quickly select all four shapes and I'm gonna lock them. Once again, just make sure everything's locked over here, which it is. And then we're gonna simply grab these two shapes. Notice it says two shapes, and we're going to move them over here. We're going to do that by hitting W and setting the work plane on the lip. D for drop. Shift select that blue one and choose L for align. Click the blue one to make it the boss. Of course, make sure it's centered and centered. 
click on the tube so that it's the only one selected. Notice I click somewhere else and I swapped and we're going to hide the tube. Now when you look at this, you can see that these were not lined up, which actually helps us because we are going to shift select the two of them. Do L for a line, make the blue on the boss and choose center. Of course, we already had the other two lined up. Now we can do show all. And if you grab them all, notice these turn purple because they were locked. If you do control G to group, the only two that really grouped, we can prove by hitting T for transparent, were our tube and the larger torus. I'm going to now just do shift nudge to move that off to the other side. W for work plane, put it back on the bottom and do D for drop. This piece right here was just a 10 by 1 by 20 groove that's going to cut into our cylinder. I already had it lined up. So I'm just going to do L for a line, make it the boss and choose center because the rest was lined up the other way. Now we need to change our height. I had measured my project. So by double clicking, this was nice to print smaller while I was testing. Now that I'm ready for the full size, I'm going to change it to the 74 I measured for the bags I buy. When I set that down, you can see right here I added a cylinder. If I do W for work plane, it's easy to see that's 26 and a half on a side. I'm going to put W for work plane to put it back on the bottom. And then up here, I added a high resolution tube. You can find that by searching the word high. When it comes out, notice they've got the measurements upside down used as a funnel. I just simply put in 15, 10, and 39 to match our diameter. And then that 10 left a hole. So you can see right here, I plugged it with a cylinder. And if we do show all right here, I simply added a tube. I used the numbers six, two and a half, and 64 with a bevel of tube to get a nice rounded connector that'll hold our project all together. Real quickly, let's shift select these two parts, do L for a line, make sure it's in the center, which it was. Now I'm gonna lock this one in place because I don't want it to move. I'm gonna switch to flat view, look at it from the top. I'm gonna click on this part and lock it because I don't want it centered. Now I can grab everything, choose L for a line. And of course I wanna make sure those are to the center and center of the project. Now I can click on this part and unlock it, click on this part and unlocked it and select them all and do control G to group, switch back to perspective view and check it out. There is your holder. If we hit T for transparent, you can see that sweet groove on the inside that makes it all function. This also lets us see that our tube is sunk in a little too far if I double click, I can edit and use control up to raise that up to a location that is probably going to print just a little more effectively. Friends, it's time to get it ready for 3D printing. I'm simply going to select them. Notice it says five shapes. It does not matter that they're separate. I'm just going to hit export as in STL and save it to my 3D modeling folder. As you can see, there have been a ton of iterations as I've been creating. Now we can bounce to Bamboo Lab Studio, click add, find that brand new project. When we import it, notice it comes in ready to roll. You can choose whatever settings you want for this. I'm gonna choose strength because I wanna see how long it'll last. If we hit slice plate, notice it does say that there is a little bit hanging up here. I have found that that does not affect the print. So I'm just simply going to accept it. And it's going to take about an hour and a half for it to print. Double check our filament, send it to the printer. And of course, once it finishes downloading, we can click that play button and monitor everything from afar. And a bit more than an hour later, we have got parts. We've got parts, we can go test. All right, so as you can see, there has been a lot of guess and check as we try and find the right numbers. These are the Amazon waste bags. That has been measured. Let's spin this around, slide it in, and snap it together. Notice it does have a bit of snugness. 
and stays just like you'd expect. How cool is that? Of course, if it's time to replace them, you can just use a screwdriver and pop it off. For reuse. How cool is that? I'm looking forward to all the other uses I can come up with for that connection. Friends, thanks for following along. I hope you've got a new skill that you can use in many of your Tinkercad projects. Friends, I do also want to say thank you to my supporters on Patreon. Don't forget you can learn more with the link below or the bit.ly up above. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching the video. Don't forget, every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment, or hit subscribe, you're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and keep tinkering.